Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Having discussed the traditional theories in the arena of international economics uh, based on international trade, in this video we are going to see certain modern theories uh, which, uh, which, uh, which is related to the arena of international economics or international trade. So these theories are also known as firm-based theories or firm-based th th trade theories. So uh, let's get started. Uh, we can see that uh, it was the mercantilist uh, or the mercantilist group of economists who came uh, first uh, with their own version of uh, international th trade theories. Then came uh, Adam Smith with his absolute theory or the absolute cost advantage theory. Then came Ricardo. Then came his of the model. Then came beyond the paradox. So actually, this, this was. Uh, a chain like process which was going on in contrast to the classical theories country based trade theories the category of modern firm based theories emerged after the second world war and these theories have developed in large part by business school professors and these are now developed uh, specifically by economists so this is the basic difference between the traditional theories and uh, modern theories when the modern theories are developed by economists specifically economists these theories these firm based theories are developed by business school professors these theories uh, or the firm based theories have evolved with the growth of the multinational companies or mnc's we know how these uh, mnc's are playing a very important role especially in the modern world scenario uh, especially when we are uh, we are a single world like we are we cannot say that a particular nation is isolated we all are connected that means that all the countries are connected through global trade globalization is there as a result of globalization the multinational companies has grown uh, very faster the country based theories could no, could in a, couldn't adequately address the expansion of either MNCs or intra industry trade, which refers to the trade between two countries of goods produced in the same country or same industry. If you uh, if you take the example of uh, Japan's exports uh, Toyota vehicles to Germany or uh, and imports of Mercedes Benz automobile from Germany, just to give you an example. Now, unlike the country-based theories, firm-based theories uh, would incorporate other product and service factors, including the brand and customer loyalty, technology, quality, uh, into understanding the trade flows. And when we have seen the uh, traditional theories or uh, the country-based theories, we could see that we were using only two factors of production, labor, and capital. But in these uh, firm-based theories, we will be taking into consideration the role of technology, the role of customer loyalty, the role of quality, all these kinds of things. Coming to the first uh, theory in the modern uh, base theory of international trade, here we are going to see the country similarity theory. And it was Linder who had developed this theory in 1961 when uh, he tried to explain the concept of India industry trade. Okay, this theory has proposed that consumers in the countries that are in the same or similar state of development would have same or similar preferences. For example, if USA and UK, these are uh, both are, both of these are developed economies. If both of these are in the uh, almost if all, both of these are in almost in the same state of development then the people in these countries would be having similar preferences for example they will be uh, looking for a similar quality products okay uh, i'm not telling that they are going for a particular brand uh, they both would be going after a particular brand but the quality i am just telling about the quality of the product they will both of these uh, both of the people in both of these countries will be looking for high quality products okay so in this firm based theory uh, proposed by linder uh, it was suggested that companies first produce for domestic consumption then only it will export because uh, first of all it has to meet the domestic demand uh, when they explore export in the companies often find that market that looks similar to their domestic one because they know that um, uh, if uh, the product they produce will be accepted in the foreign economy only if it is accepted in the home country 
So Linder's conveyor similarity theory then states that most trade in the manufactured goods would be between countries with similar per capita incomes and intra-industrial trade would be common. Okay, and um, this theory it is considered to be useful in understanding the trade in goods where brand names and product reputations are very much important. Next uh, came the products life cycle theory which was developed in 1960s by Vernon. Uh, he was a Harvard Business School professor. He developed this theory. Um, this theory uh, originating in the field of marketing, it stated that life cycle has got three different stages. First is new product. Next is maturing product. Then is standardized product. Okay. So, uh, you are actually going for the production of a new product and this will completely in the home country. Okay. In the 1960s, you can see that this theory gained importance because the theory was trying to explain the manufacturing successes in the United States. So, it has, uh, uh, this theory has also been used to describe the personal computer uh, uh, development or the development of personal computer through its product cycle. So, uh, when it came into being when pc came into being it was in 1970s it was a new product then it became matured it got developed uh, during the 1980s and 90s today what we could see is a standardized pc right you could have different versions of computer we could have laptop computer we could have tablet we could have desktop so uh, and also we could have uh, smartphone turned to a computer right so there is are uh, this is not the product cycle life cycle theory a product has been developed first then it will get matured and then it would become standardized even though research as well as development uh, are typically associated with the first or the new product stage and then completed in the home country the emerging market economies uh, especially india china etc offer highly skilled labor and new research facilities at substantial cost advantage for global firms. Next came the global strategic rivalry theory. This was uh, put forward by Paul Krugman and Lancaster, Kelvin Lancaster. It was in the 18, uh, 1980s that uh, the, their work came into, uh, uh, I mean, their work came into uh, the limelight. Their theory focused on MNCs, the multinational companies again and their report uh, to gain a competitive advantage against other global firms in their industry. So, uh, it is seen that firms, if they are in the market, they will be uh, they will be facing competition. There would be rivals, right? So, the critical ways that a firm can obtain a sustainable competitive advantage is not the barriers to entry for that, uh, for that industry. Barriers to entry refer to the obstacles that a new firm would be facing when trying to enter the market. So these barriers, um, uh, this would include barriers with respect to research and development, uh, ownership of intellectual property rights, economies of scale, all these kinds of things. Uh, these would be faced by a company or a, a firm when it uh, tries to enter the market. Next came the Porto's National Competitive Advantage Theory, which uh, became popular in the 1990s. Uh, Porter's theory stated that a nation's competitiveness in an industry would depend upon its capacity uh, uh, to innovate and upgrade. This theory tried to explain uh, the reason behind uh, some nations are more competitive, especially with respect to certain industries. So, Porter uh, told that there would be four determinants. Uh, like uh, local market resources, capabilities, market demand condition, local suppliers and complementary disease and also local firm characteristics in influencing uh, the decision of a firm. So we are going to see each of these in detail. Coming to the local market resources and capabilities, uh, what Porter has did, done is that he has recognized the value of certain um, uh, important theories in the arena of uh, international trade. For example, the facts of proportion theory and he could see that um, there would be such a key factors in determining what products that a country would export or import. Coming to the local market demand condition, he, he believed that a sophisticated home market is very much important to ensure ongoing innovation. Coming to local suppliers and complementary industries, he, he understood that 
in order to remain as competitive large global firms benefit from having strong or efficient supporting industries to provide input and uh, coming to the local firm characteristic we could see that a healthy level of rivalry between local firms will spur innovation and competition so in addition to these determinants um, uh, potter has also noted the government and uh, government play a very important role okay because government uh, government is the one which imposes taxations it is the one which gives subsidies to the firms so as a result the government plays a very important role having discussed different uh, new or modern economic theories we have to see which theory is dominant today all these theories are important in one point or the other while they have uh, the, the uh, all theories have developed by economists these are the ones which are developed by uh, business school professionals we know that countries don't have absolute advantages in many arenas of production and some countries have this uh, disproportionate benefit of some factors uh, and also we can see that why uh, the labor pool in certain countries are cheapest uh, in many countries these are unskilled labor there are certain advantages with respect to certain factors of production in such countries like uh, united states but in us also imports a vast amount of goods and services as us cons consumers use their wealth to purchase what they need and want so we cannot say that uh, one theory is dominant around one world so we could see that in practice government companies etc use uh, some combinations of these theories in order to interpret the reality just as these theories have evolved of, over the past few years uh, these theories would definitely continue to change and and also there there would be we can expect new and new theories to come in the future because world is evolving right so Uh, the theories which we had uh, during the evolution of um, during the emergence of uh, international economics is not that we have to see today that we now we have modern theories and definitely we, this too will face a change and in the future we will be have another set of theories as well With that we end today's session please like share and subscribe to this channel and also please be a part of my telegram channel and telegram group i'll be providing the links of the same in the description box